probably the biggest industry of Cape Breton is tourism and that industry would disappear if everything was contaminated or was just a lot of uh, unremediated industrial sites. It would not be pleasing to the eye. Our, city, our island would look run down, but through the work that we're doing, we keep everything looking lush and green for our tourists and for our fishermen. Mining began here on the island over 250 years ago. In the first underground mine, that was driven in 1720. Every day that the miners went to work, their families were were scared, the wives were scared, even the kids, you know, as they grew older later on and they knew how dangerous it was. People ask me all the time, why did you do it? We never had nothing else here. We never had no factories or anything like that to go to here. This was our living. When the government took over our coal mines here, they made them better for what the old coal companies were. So as long as the mine is operating, groundwater is seeping in. Once the mine shuts down and the pumps are turned off and the water levels rise. So every mine we have fills and it's, uh, at some point they overflow and when they overflow the problems start to occur because of the quality of the water that, that's coming out. We treat our water so we can control where it comes to the surface because it will eventually reach the surface on its own if left untreated and then it will spill out at its easiest point and that could be on a beach, the harbour, and by treating it at the plant, we can catch it before it rises anywhere else and become a detriment to anybody's property or the environment. We have eight treatment sites in total. Um, they range from purely passive treatment to, at the other extreme, a high density system which is highly industrialized. The passive system is, uh, is as, as the name implies, we allow nature to take its, take its course. As the water comes to surface, we intercept that water and we send it through a series of ditches and channels to give, uh, give the water a chance to neutralize through contact with limestone. Uh, and then it goes through a settling pond to allow for precipitation of any metals that are in the water and then a wetland for filtration. But for the active water treatment, we intercept the mine water in the mine. We pump it into a, into a plant where we add lime. So by adding lime, we're neutralizing the acids in the water. And as we neutralize it, the metals precipitate out and they form a sludge. So the sludge gets separated from the water. The water is then sent out to a, a settling pond and a wetland system before it's discharged in the environment. The nature of our work is such that it's not in the forefront of the community. The mines being underground themselves, um, the old shaft buildings, any of the old work buildings, they're all long gone. So our work is very behind the scenes. We know that the problem's there, but by and large, the community is unaware of the issue. Um, I like to think that's because we do such a good job containing it. I'd be most proud of the environment that we're saving. You know, I have four kids that grow up here. Uh, we can see areas where we have done remediation, the difference before and after, and it's dramatic. Uh, and for those kids, for them to be able to see this is, you know, this is what we do and this is what we can do, then that's important. They need to learn that the world is a, is a perishable product. If, if we don't take care of it, then there's nothing left for us. My father was a coal miner. My both grandfathers were coal miners. I wanted to stay on the island. So I ended up in the coal mines. And don't get me wrong, I loved it. I loved every day of it. 